because okay. after this turning point of having these of having the races and, and just looking at it and just not succeeding, then you obviously at that point, like you had said during the third race, and for those of you who just tune in, they're gonna have to go back and watch the turning point in the rest of this episode to hear the whole story. And Jeff, you were saying during that third race is when you were you were finally starting to get the the clue in your gut that maybe doing this wasn't your passion. Is that correct? Yes, the the, the third race was the point of you know listening to the people around me as opposed to being a stubborn entrepreneur. No, 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 this is it, this is it, and not taking a objective view of my surroundings. It was when um, after that third race, I was like, okay, I need to see what I need to reevaluate the situation. Yeah, and I love it. You, you, you say being a stubborn entrepreneur, and I hear thinking with the head, and then we're also talking about trusting your gut. So at that point, if you can remember, were you thinking that you were being stubborn because it's what your gut was telling you to do, or were you overriding your intuition with what was going on in your head? Can you, can you remember what you were going through at that point? Yeah, I was overriding what, was, what my gut was telling me. Yeah, I might... My gut, what I love to do, what I'm good at, was not races, and I was like, no, we're going to do this. You know, I see all these races, and Cincinnati is a big running place. Um, there's mud runs here. There's all this jazz. I'm like, you know, this is going to be easy. We just, we just need to do one more time. We just need to do another one, you know, and uh, I should have listened to my gut as opposed to overriding it. Yeah, and I love that because once again, as we talked about in the previous, you know, with the, everybody's read, you know, Think and Grow Rich, and everybody's heard the story Three Feet from Gold. And the problem with some of us entrepreneurs is we always think that we're three feet from gold and we shut off that, that intuition that's telling us, well, okay, let's try a different path. Because while you might have been three feet from maybe bronze at that point, <laughs> right. you know, obviously you switch paths and you found gold. Um, yeah. So you you dug in a you dug in a different direction when you were going through because I'm quite sure there's many entrepreneurs and many coaches who are watching the show right now who are going through the same thing that have heard all this stuff about you know keep pushing forward and keep digging that tunnel to find that gold when you went through it's you had said you um, you started to reevaluate things. Do you remember any process you went through? Was there any, you know, thing you sat down? Did? did you write things down? Did you talk to people? What process did you go through to start reevaluating things? Well, I I've, I was personal training the whole time of doing these races. Um, the race was going to be, you know, so big that I could stop personal training and do this full time event thing. But um, so, you know, I would ask my clients, you know, what, you know, what am I doing wrong? What's going on here? What's uh, what's the magic secret to make this thing happen? And that was when, you know, not only my wife, but some of the other people were like, you're not a runner. You can't just do this and think it's going to automatically work. It, you're good at training. Focus on what you're good at. And um, as soon as I did that was the transitional point of, okay, how do I grow, you know, my solopreneur business of, you know, of, a personal trainer? How do I grow my brand out there? What do I do to increase word of mouth? How do I set up referral programs? How do I do challenges to make it more fun and people wanting to come in and tell their friends about it? Things of that nature. Oh, epic. And that's, you know, it's all about focus. It's all about, you know, focusing on what you're best at and what makes you, what makes you successful and what makes you you and then channeling all your energy in that direction, right? I mean, because I would, I would after that third race and losing all that money, I, you know, it, it hurt inside. You know, my dream is to be successful and not live paycheck to paycheck. And you know, we were definitely living paycheck to paycheck at the time. And you know, I just had had that burning desire of never, you know, I never want to get a job again. I always want to work for myself. And so the entrepreneur fire was inside me, but just the path to success was not. I wasn't on the right one. I just had to alter it and take a hard left. So let me ask you a question because a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with this. They look at people who are entrepreneurs, maybe doing information products or doing something else, you know, and I'll, I'll say races is a great example because races is a one to many thing. You know, you can do it once, bring many people in and you can make a, you can make a profit off of it. Was there any drive did so let me ask you this first. Was there any drive to get out of the one-to-one -one thing and, and t 
take your skills and knowledge to a greater audience? Was that part of the drive? Yeah, that was part of the drive. Um, you know, try to grow not the infomercial, you know, P90X kind of style, but to have a bigger um, community following of people that like what I do. You know, I'm different from everyone else because of my um, diversity in my workouts. I use single functional piece of equipment you have. I'm a black belt, so I do a lot of um, martial arts and kickboxing with my clients. Uh, we do a lot of sports training. I used to be a gymnast, so we incorporate that in the core. Um, so it's when you think of personal trainer, most people see a meathead. You know, we're just going to build big muscle and that's it. I'm more of the fun, sarcastic, um, enjoy the workout, but at the same time, you know, half my people, you know, are battling cancer or diabetes or had a total knee replacement. I do a lot of the injury rehab, um, you know, that kind of jazz that I can transfer someone's life of being miserable and not being able to do much to going from a knee replacement at 66 years old and that next year going with their son to Scotland and climbing 17 castles, 1,500 steps, like he didn't miss a beat and he's, you know, thanked me for that because of the ability that he's able to do. Right. And isn't that so much more enjoyable and doesn't it give you so much more uh, happiness and satisfaction than watching 300 people run for 5 or 10K? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, but that, and, and it's kind of a little bit of a joke, but that's, you know, that ends up becoming the serious part of this is the fact that, uh, and I guess where I was getting at before, let me ask you a direct question. Was the draw of making possibly quick money in a short time? In other words, running the races, yes, having to invest a lot, but then boom, you know, being able to just market it and then, you know, on that race day, you know, you get 5,000 people and you've made a huge profit. Do you think the draw of making that, I'll, I'll call it quick money versus the, versus the passion you have, uh, do you think that draw of making quick money overrode the passion you had for other things, meaning that that was kind of like you were looking at that brass ring, just going for that brass ring and not realizing that you you could build a more successful business um, <clears throat> with doing what you with doing what you really loved? Yeah, because, I mean, the races were stressful and it was that shiny object syndrome like, oh, you know, that quick money is going to make such a big difference. And in reality, um, I'm more successful now. I love, I mean, I work six and a half days a week. Um, you know, I'm always working, but I, I don't wake up stressed any day. I love all my clients that I have. I get to hang out with friends more than, oh, I got to go to work on Monday. And Monday's from 6 in the morning until 8.30 at night. So my Mondays are a long day of people. And, but I look forward to it because we get to hang out, get to catch up on them. We get to, you know, transfer their, transform their life. Um, meet whatever goals they're looking for, and you know I just never want that anxiety. So in doing what I love, makes me happy literally every single day of my life. Yeah, and that is so important. I think that's a, a good place to kind of wrap up the aftermath because it is so important to be able to do what to be able to do what you love and to be able to figure out how to how to monetize it and the, the beautiful part about living in the you know living in the time and age we are is you can monetize pretty much anything whether you can monetize it to live, live a successful lifestyle or not that's that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother time uh, there are, you know many things you can and most things you know you can find enough with with going on eight billion people or how many of a billion people we have in the world today you know, we're fortunate to live in the time that we do because if you're just looking at monetizing something for you, <clears throat> excuse me, or for your for your family, usually you can monetize your passion in a way that'll at least give you a sustainable life. And the interesting thing, and I can't wait to talk about this in the second half, because Jeff, just to give a real quick preview of the second half, I think you mentioned about being a virtual trainer and training some people, if not, you know, training at least some of your clients virtually, right? Correct. Oh, epic. So I'm sure during the part, during the, during, as we talk about being accountable, nutrition and knowledge of a plan, I'm sure we'll be able to throw some stuff in there because I'm really interested to hear, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, more about that piece of your business as well. So folks, I think we're gonna do a cough counter for the over under today for the view. Yes, I haven't announced an over under. I was trying to figure out if it was a scratch or a cough, but I think it's going to be a cough and I'm already at two. So we're going to make it five. Uh, so the under is four, the push is five and the over is six. For those of you never watched before 
you'll get you'll get the hang of it for those of you those of you old hats to this. <clears throat> There's number three. I think I'd bet the over today. I don't know. I just me. I think I'd bet the over. But then again, it's it's you and it's your own thing. Whatever you want to do. So we're gonna take a very very quick break so you can figure out whether you want to bet the over or under. And then we'll be back with Jeff and we're gonna talk all about business versus body and health, which comes first. And I'm sure we're also gonna do at least a little bit about Jeff's virtual virtual training and how epic and interesting that whole concept is. So stick around and we'll be right back. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now. You'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video. 